Well, Gaffer, first league game of the season against Fleetwood. Seems weird, obviously, we're talking about the first league game of the season at home, given we've already played a few games, but you must be looking forward to getting started. Yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We're at home. Um, also, a very good home record last season, one we want to try and repeat again this season. Uh, come up against a very strong team. Uh, you know, go back 12 months, and or longer than 12 months now, obviously. Obviously, we, they defeated us in the first home game last season, so it's something we want to put right if we can, but um, we're looking forward to it. We know we, we know we were below the standards we expect, and the players know that as well against Accrington, so hopefully we can bounce back and get our first win of the season. Yeah, they've had a really good start, haven't they, Fleetwood? Yeah, I mean, they had a home game to start with, and then obviously won the cup game. So they're a strong opponent, you know, and they've lost some players from last season, particularly defenders, but they've recruited well again, um, and I think they're going to be right up there, one of the teams that will be probably pushing all the way this season, as they were last season. So I don't see many things changing there. So, but for ourselves, you know, the game we always look at ourselves and where we need to improve, and and basically what we did on Monday morning as we do. After every game, we looked at some of the positives, and then we looked at things that we needed to reflect on in terms of what we need to do better. And then you hope that way that the players can progress. That's the idea. But um, you know, the players are fully aware that we need to improve our performance, and particularly the intensity uh, going into this game on the weekend. Yeah, there might have been a bit of a surprise package last season, but they probably won't be this year, given the fact that the players they've recruited and, and what they did achieve last year. Yeah, they didn't surprise me last season because if you look at the players they had in, in terms of. A lot of experience, you know, Evans, Madden, Coots, uh, things like that. They brought in the loan market, Gibson and Suter. Gibson towards the end, obviously, Suter at the start. Um, you know, they've got Danny Andrew, very good left back. Burns, they can, they're can. they quite flexible and they're, they're similar to us. They're, they're flexible in terms of they'll change formations within a game without making substitutions. I like that about them. So we know what they bring to the table. Um, obviously, they beat us twice last season. Um, so we know it's going to be a very difficult game. But we're prepared as we always do, and it's up to the players then on Saturday to produce a performance. And you know we we need to get back to winning ways. Yeah, some fans might have been confused when they saw Louis Reed on the bench, thinking how can he be on the bench because of the salary cap and mm. all that malarkey. But obviously that doesn't come into effect until October. And obviously, given the fact you had Reese Brown out, and Reedy's not done anything wrong in terms of his performances, that's probably why he was been thinking. Yeah, I think what, what what I've explained to the players that possibly are not going to be in the salary cap is not about their football and ability. It's just about Obviously, we can only get so many players in it, and the players that, have, that you know, the obvious ones we've spoke about have, have been great and trained very well. Lewis Reed, his performances have been good, and his performance against Burton was excellent on the Tuesday. So I think it's I think it's the second week of October. The I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. I know it's October, so early in October I have to give my squad that's within the salary cap. So before then, whatever was in my mind, I can make changes to. I feel I need a, a more. I need. I need it to be settled now. I don't think we're going to be doing. You never know, but any more recruitment. Obviously, we're aware of one of the two that might go out before the the, the sort of salary cap comes in. But with Lewis Reed, he's one that I can always bring back into it if I feel right. And at the moment, I can use as many you know any players I want. So why would I not do that? So I think Lewis has been great. We've had a couple of good chats, and he's he's in a good place at the moment. Yeah, one of the players obviously has been injured. That's not part of the salary cap squad. Jason A. Smith obviously been training to get back to full fitness. Ideally, you need him well, for him. I suppose he needs to play games, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, I, it's not a nice job for a manager when you have players that you know have very good attitudes and good professionals. Jason A. Smith, one boy, another that, that unfortunately have to make these decisions for the benefit of everyone, um, and particularly the, the, the club, and I've got my decisions have always got to be based upon what's the best decision for the club, and unfortunately I can only get so many players in, and I feel that also with them, those two in particular, are they going to play enough games to satisfy them? Probably not, so they need to try and find the club as best they can. You know, we've recruited, I feel, very, very well in certain areas in terms of Obviously, the 10 position where Boydie can play, it's Smodich and Broom, and I've got young Flynn, so I don't want to also, which the players understand, I've spoken to them and been very honest, we can't stop the development of younger players at this club, that's key to what we're trying to do, both short term and long term. So for those two, I think it's important that they go out and get games on a regular basis, and obviously we hope that's the case before before October. And is it harder now to get players out than it's ever been because of because you've got salary cap, because of coronavirus, because people are going to have smaller squads? Is it more difficult to get the players out than you probably want to get I think out? it is because not everyone's got an Ivan Tony that can obviously recruit on the back of that. Mm. 
uh, and saying that we did bring two or three in before then. And, and I've been very, very pleased with the recruitment I've done. Uh, we have done it, we have looked at it as a club and we've got most of the players we wanted in. Obviously, you know, we've lost Ivan, but we knew that was going to happen. Uh, but I feel for, for clubs it is more difficult, but they have to find a way of, of getting a squad together, you know. So we hope that one or two things happen before October because it clearly I've got too many numbers. It's easier with the younger ones like, you know, your Cartwrights and your, your Carl Barkers. You're getting them experience and, and developing them, going out on low and to perhaps non-league or League Two in the cases with maybe Sam and Kyle. So we'll wait and see. Sahat's another one that I think is going to be a very, very good player for us. Mm. But his development now is to, to go and play some football. And, you know, it doesn't mean that he comes in one year and then he's gone. We're not looking at Sahat that way. Certainly not. We're looking at, okay, what's the next stage of his development? Clearly in the position he plays, we're strong. And we feel that him going out on loan would and a regular games to the right club that play football and fit him into the right way and shape will really benefit him. And then he'll come back to us and we think, OK, he'll have a lot more belief and confidence and play league football. So these are the decisions you have to make, but it's a, it's a, it's a thought out, it's a well thought out plan. It's not something that just comes. We were fully aware that these situations may arise. Um, Ricky J. Jones back in training? Yeah, he'll be in the squad Saturday. Yeah, he's, he's looking good. And that's a boost because obviously, particularly given the availability of selection last weekend, and he gives you something different as well, yeah. doesn't he? Well, that's what you look for in, in, in players in different positions. In his position as a striker, he gives you something different. There's no question about it. And something we missed last week, we needed something different. You know, especially Dembele wasn't involved, and then all of a sudden Ricky's not involved. So then you're looking at players that are not really strikers, and when you're particularly 1-0 behind, you know, we had to to find a way of breaking them down, which we weren't good enough doing on the day. But um, yeah, he gives you something different. We all know what that is, but he's improving. He's, his technical ability is improving. We're doing a lot of work with the boy. It was a pity he got injured because he'd come off the back of a, a very good performance and a couple of goals, or more than a couple of goals pre-season. But listen, we know what Ricky is, and, and people may forget he's, he's, he's only 17. You know, he's, um, he's still very, very, very young. Uh, but yeah, we, we feel that he, he's going to be play a big part of the season in terms of what he can bring to the table. Fraser Lake Tracy still missing? He'll still be missing. Obviously, we've got Brown and Dembele that will be back with us, but you have to say there are big, big doubts in terms of uh, one, them off the time they've had off. Dembele, we've managed to get a little bit more work at home with him than Brownie because we've managed to get a treadmill of Dems' mm. house and all the rest of it. Brownie had stronger symptoms of the virus than, than Dems as well. So they maybe come back in different conditions. Brownie's in today and he'll do a bit of work. But yeah, you'd have to say that they won't be involved Saturday, wouldn't I thought?